Earlier, we learned that the goal of this course is to test for differences in brain activity between two experimental conditions, incongruent and congruent flanker trials. We expect that brain regions involved in cognitive control, a concept discussed previously, will be more active in the incongruent condition compared to the congruent condition. In order to test this, we will need to first pre-process our data, or clean it up, in other words. If you've ever taken a picture and found problems with it, blurriness, red eye, or faded colors, for example, you can then use an image editor to remove those problems. We do the same thing with the three-dimensional images of the brain taken with the scanner. Each of our pre-processing steps will clean up the images and prepare them for statistical analysis, which we will discuss in a later video. Pre-processing step is done with apne commands, which are similar to Unix commands. They typically require at least one input argument, and they usually require you to specify what to call the output of the command. Let's take skull stripping, for example, a common pre-processing step that removes the skull from the brain. The apne command to do this is called 3D skull strip. Navigate to the directory sub 8 anat and then type 3D skull strip and then press enter. You will see the following message. An error is thrown since the command expects arguments. To see examples of how to use the command, type 3D skull strip dash H, a vertical pipe, and then less, which pipes the output of the help file into the less command. When you are in this paging window, type D to go down one page, U to go up one page, and the up and down arrows to go up or down by one line. To search the help file, type a forward slash followed by the string that you want to find. When you are done, press the Q key to exit the paging window. As you can see, the help files are one of Avni's greatest strengths. The usage of each command is clearly outlined, and the reasons for using different options are explained in detail. Sample commands are given to cover different scenarios. For example, if the skull strip leaves too much skull in the output image, you are encouraged to use an option such as push to edge. From the help file, we also learned that 3D skull strip requires an input flag to specify the anatomical data set that will be stripped. Knowing this, try typing this command, 3D skull strip dash input, followed by the name of the anatomical image. After about a minute, a new file called skull strip out plus a rig will be generated. This is the skull strip anatomical image, which you can look at in the AFNI viewer. Look in all three viewing panes to see how well the skull stripping worked. You'll probably notice a few voxels of cortex being removed in the frontal lobes and some bits of dura mater left around the top and the back of the brain. But overall, the skull stripping did very well. Another way to view the quality of the strip is to load the anatomical image sub t t1w.nii.gz as an underlay. This is the original anatomical image. And then, as an overlay, you can load the skull stripped image skull strip out. Once you've loaded both of these, you can alternately view and hide the overlay by clicking anywhere in the viewing windows and then pressing the O key to toggle the overlay being shown and being hidden. Another option is to press the U key to toggle between each image as an underlay. These viewing options will be helpful in any scenario in which you have to examine the data before and after a pre-processing step. Although the skull stripping worked reasonably well, let's see if we can improve it by using the push to edge option that was specified in the help file, which helps avoid removing any parts of the cortex. In general, it's better to err on the side of including small bits of dura mater and other non-brain matter as opposed to removing any parts of the cortex. 
It's also useful to add a prefix option to label the output as something intelligible. Try the following command. 3D skull strip dash push to edge dash input and then the original anatomical image. Let's call the output anat underscore ss to specify that it is skull stripped. After a couple of minutes, a new file called anat underscore ss plus a rig will be generated. Just as we did before, look at the images before and after using the AFNI viewer and compare it to the skull stripped image that you generated previously. You can do this by specifying the original anatomical as an underlay and each of the skull stripped as overlays. Do you see anything that looks better, worse? Which version would you choose and why? We could create a text file with all of the preprocessing commands we would use, such as 3D skull strip, and then run them all from the command line. However, this approach is tedious and prone to error. Instead, we'll learn how to use a command called ubersubject.py to create this preprocessing script for us. All that and more in the next video.